Hi, and welcome to the Fuspal channel. I'm your host, Marcus Fjortoft, and as always, joined by co host Jan Fjortoft. And we're starting this episode on a more of a somber note because over the weekend, uh, former manager, former player, and enjoyer of life, I'd say, has become readily apparent through the various tributes from various players and colleagues and what have you in Sven Jörn Eriksson, the Swede who retired at the age of 27, went on to have an illustrious managerial career, uh, won the Serie A with Lazio, won seven titles with, with Lazio there, has been in Fiorentina, Roma, has been in numerous other places, and also the first non-English manager of the national team. That, as we have seen the various tributes pour in, and uh, I guess the key words have been the grace, the the class, the kindness and and in the intelligence, of course, of of this man. What are some of the main things that have have stuck to you over 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 the last days with, with with what has happened? It was very sad news, and I think that the main sad news was about a year ago when he said that he had one year left, and he made a lot of great interviews. And I think the essence, the the story, the message of in all of his interviews was the things you you were saying, Marcus. This is a Scandinavian coach that took Scandinavian out in the world. He started in Sweden, being influenced by Hutton and Hodgson, uh, Roy Hodgson. They, they came to Scandinavia, to Sweden, and he kind of built up that Scandinavian way. And then from then on, he was a global coach and one of the greatest around. Not only, he had 18 trophies, I think, but he could have had more. In terms of being the one he was, you were saying Lazio, Sampdoria, uh, Benfica, and he should have maybe won uh, the title with England as well. Uh, how I know him is through his assistant coach, Todd Grip, who was my national coach. And um, we we, uh, we had some time to spend with him, Marcus, and I, d- I didn't know him well, but like f- in football, you meet up and I will tell you we'll tell about those meetings afterwards but i think what we have asked we have asked adrian bevington a good friend of mine who may be the one who worked most closely with him as a chief as a boss at the english fa he worked with him for over six years so i asked him to send us a message about sven joran Eriksson or svenis as he was called here in scandinavia i worked with sven joran Eriksson for the best part of six years from his arrival as England manager in late 2000, all the way through to the World Cup in Germany in 2006. Throughout that time, I was astounded by his capability to remain calm, consistent, and always impeccably polite with his behaviour at all times, despite the incredible pressure that he was put under, the microscope, the media intrusion, Uh, managing a team of real big global superstars at big tournaments. He never changed in how he behaved, and that is something that I'll always think of with Sven. But more so, anyone who knew him closely will always think about the brilliant sense of humour that he had. He didn't take things too seriously. He always saw things on the positive rather than the negative side, and... He had a, he loved a he loved a joke. At the end of the evening, he did love a glass of red wine and a chat with his colleagues. And he he empowered people. He didn't try to dictate policy. He would always um, listen to what other people had to say. He'd make decisions in the end on the football side, but he was always someone who empowered people to get on with their jobs. And he kept words to a minimum. He spoke quietly. He was so well respected wherever he travelled. He wanted to understand so much more about other people and the cultures from all around the world. He was, for me, a wonderful England coach. And we can all discuss and debate the tactical formations of whether, you know, he could have done different things with the midfield with England or was it the right overall formation. But he was so close in reality. You know, I, I still think in 2002 against Brazil when, Ronaldinho scored the the, the long range effort against David Seaman. Uh, if that doesn't go hit go in and it's one one for a long period of time with them having ten men, you know, do we knock a Brazil team out that had Rivaldo, Ronaldo, and Ronaldinho with Cafu uh, and Roberto Carlos at fullback? It wasn't impossible. I don't think we were really ready then, but we were so ready in two thousand and four. 
and he had a lot of confidence built at that stage. And had Wayne Rooney not broke his foot in the quarter-final, when we were leading 1-0, England, in my opinion, go on and win that tournament. There was so much confidence in that group. And he allowed that confidence to grow and breathe from what was originally a very young team that he inherited. Germany was a disappointment in 2006. And obviously that was the end of Sven's reign. But I maintained a great friendship with him throughout the rest of his life. And he's someone that I will always remember so positively with a great smile, with a great passion for football and for being a lovely person, a wonderful man. R.I.P. Sven, you'll always be greatly remembered. Take care. And that was Adrian Bevington, uh, some lovely words on a, on a lovely man. And obviously we don't know him and you've come across him and, and I've come across him as, as a, young, a young kid. But what I found myself, and without making it about us, but what I found very um, clear in the previous encounters with people who knew him better was his ability to make people seen as if when you were in his company that that was his focus and he paid that attention I remember that as a 10 to 11 year old kid even getting that sense then and as a 10 to 11 year old you're I don't think you're the most in reflective of states you're not thinking of those things but I did remember it back then because I thought as a kid England manager, what have you, what have you, and then being around someone like that, it was. I remember even back looking back and thinking, the fact that he took time to someone like me, who we didn't have to, or for others, and I think that is so telling of a man's character and 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 generosity uh, as such. And that's why we wanted to do this short episode about Senor and Eriksson Marcus because. In some way, he was a role model. He should be a role model for all of us. Yes, he was a great coach. Yes, he had some great ideas. Uh, and as Adrian was talking about, a fantastic humor, a bit of Swedish kind of English kind of shy kind of humble humor, if you understand what I mean. The players loved him. Unfortunately, I never had a chance to to be a player under him. But he was one of those guys. And he was a Scandinavian who kind of um, adjusted to the European way. I remember... Some years ago, there was a delegation of Norwegian coaches. I think they were going to, to was it Fiorentina? Well, it was it Fiorentina? It was at that stage. Mm -hmm. And um, they, were, they, were, they were looking at a game. And Norwegian coaches, you know, all about develop players, all about giving them an environment to develop them. That's, that's the Scandinavian way. And that's the Swedish way that Sven was a part of. So after the game, they, they had a meeting. The, the right back had a terrible game. And they... They went over to Sven and they, they met him afterwards, probably for a good red wine, as Adrian was talking about, because he was a life lover, so to say. And um, they asked him, what are you going to do if it doesn't work out with that uh, right back? And Sven just took a sip of his red wine and looked at him and said, uh, I buy a new one. And so he was, he was partly that Scandinavian why, and Adrian was talking about his tactics and everything, because sometimes he was criticized for that because he came from the, the Bob Hutton, Roy Hodgson school, which was quite strict in terms of not very in, not in, not innovative. Now, what do you say? In, yeah. Innovations in, in, in his game. And he was also criticized for that for England because he took over. Uh, also, I'm referring to, to Aiden, a very young team, had some global stars in there that he had to handle. But his manhandling was fantastic. And, and I think, Marcus, both of us, what are you talking about? I remember uh, this is around 2005. Uh, I met him for the first time. Uh, I was retired. I was three years retired. Todd Grip organized so I can get into the England uh, training. I was following their training. First one who comes over is Sven. And Sven comes over to me as a nobody Norwegian. And he said, I know you. So he, he was like, he was, and I felt mm -hmm. that he was, I was the most important man in the world in those 10 seconds or, 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 or the chat we had together. And, and, and then next time we met him, Marcus was, uh, and some months later when you were able to, to uh, go to your big favorite, David Beckham and Michael Oven turn up, Wayne Rooney turn up. Yeah. And again at Old Trafford and, uh, but they if were you were in the if you were in the if you were at home now in the studio and behind the shirts that you have, you could have revealed it. And there actually there is the, the the collection of pictures wherein which I'm standing with him amongst the other players that you mentioned. Yes. Exactly. You got a photo with him and he was as kind as you could be. And I think that again, a tribute to the man, a tribute to the personality. He he made you feel very important. He made me feel very important. 
every human being that he met. He, he felt he, he made them feel important. And I think that is the tribute we want to send out here, Marcus, as a role model. I wish I was like that. I'm not like that. I try, but I'm, I'm not good enough. You are the same, Marcus. You are, thank God, more from your mother than from your <laughs> father in terms of, but to be present, to be there for them. And and the the, the one we remember when um, Boro, this is in 2006, I think they played Stoya Bucharesti, if I'm not completely mm-hmm. wrong, when I went all the way to the final. And, and Sven Joran was there, England manager, was so many he was under pressure as they adrian was saying he was under pressure all the time and and we talked with him we were in the v, uh, vip or, or the boardroom at Middlesbrough. and i remember a small thing and I, I guess i've seen all the players have had him i've seen all the stories they're telling about sven that that was very typical for him uh i remember when we were supposed to go you were 12 uh, i was standing there i was norwegian and he talked swedish and and then I said, uh, we were both going to leave. And uh, you said you had to go to the toilet. And I said to Sven, yeah, it was great to meet you. Uh, Mark is going to the toilet, so I'll, I'll just wait for him. You went to the toilet, and I, I was waiting outside the door, and you came back. And then we come back, Sven Joran was standing there. And I said, are you still here? And he said, yeah, of course. I, I was waiting for you guys. We go out. And so it was mm-hmm. Fjortov Senior and Fjortov Junior. And he, the England coach, maybe the most prolific football personality uh, standing there waiting for two people who will now, uh, 18 years later, memorize that as a great day. And I think that this is a praise to a man who all his life got every human being to feel that way. And I think that is the greatest tribute that can be to anyone. His man management, as we've seen, all the players I've talked to about Sven Joran Eriksson, there is nobody who will kind of talk him about him in a in a bad way. So, um, or condolences to to his family, of course. But uh, I think uh, if this was on a football pitch, we will like, kind of clap now for one minute mm-hmm. because he's been one of the greatest personalities, greatest human being that's been in our football, at least in our generation. Absolutely world class. He fell asleep peacefully outside uh, his home in in Sunna, um, and yes, as after knowing he had a fatal illness, what a tribute it was. And on an ending note, that is how you kind of ideally want any legend or anyone to be sent off is that people are able to express their appreciation and love for you before you pass away, rather than after. And he got that, and so well deserved as such. So and and. And one, and one thing just at the end, Mark, is a big praise to Liverpool Football Club when Sven Joran came out and said, there is one club I would love, love to manage in my life, in the Liverpool Football Club. Then Liverpool Football Club, in that legend mm-hmm. game, invited him to, to Anfield. I saw the photos, the videos yesterday when he came onto the pitch. He was well received by the cup, by the Liverpool fans. So a fantastic... Um, Praise to the Liverpool Football Club, the Liverpool fans who gave him that last wish to fulfil it for him. So uh, rest in peace, uh, Sven Joran. I, I know that heaven has got a great coach and there will be a good team up there and they will probably all have a red vine at the end.